Good afternoon, folks. My name is Sophia Batone, and welcome to another episode of The Edge. The D.A.R.E. program has been a staple in many children's lives as they go through elementary school. D.A.R.E., or the Drug Abuse Resistance Education Program, is a program that warns students of the risks of drugs and alcohol abuse. Today, we are joined by Officer Judd Emery. He has been a police officer for the past 18 years and has focused as a narcotics detective for the past 12 years, or for 12 years, I'm sorry. Officer Emery took charge of the D.A.R.E. program in August of 2018 and has worked with students at McMurray Elementary School. So, Officer Judd, how are you doing today? Good, and yourself? I'm doing all right. So, what piqued your interest in wanting to take on the D.A.R.E. program? Um, <clears throat> from my past work experience, uh, I came to Peters Township with a lot of uh, experience in the narcotics field. Um, I transitioned into working in Peters. They asked me if I wanted to be the school resource officer at the middle school. Uh, I took over that position. Um, at the same time, Officer Dave was in, a, in retirement mode. He was retiring and they asked if I would take over teaching the D.A.R.E. program. I never gave it much thought before they asked me to start teaching the D.A.R.E. program, um, but once I went away to the training and, and I really got invested in it. So what has it like been taking over the D.A.R.E. program since Officer Dave has retired? Um, it's been a challenge for me. I wasn't comfortable initially with the teaching aspect. Um, it's something I'd never done. It, it, it took me a little bit. I, I've, I've gotten pretty comfortable with it. Um, it was all new to me, and it's just learning the curriculum and, and being familiar with it was the main problem for me. Interesting. So, um, who would you say is the target audience of the D.A.R.E. program? The D.A.R.E. program, they have curriculum that targets K through 12. Here in Peters Township, we uh, target first, second, third, and fifth grade. Um, first, second, first and second grade, there are four lessons. Third grade, they have a curriculum for third and fourth grade, but it's the same, so we just do third grade, so they get four lessons. And then in fifth grade, they get 10 lessons. Interesting. So would you say <coughs> that the younger children are really like susceptible to the uh, D.A.R.E. program? Like, do they like the class and the education? I, I, I feel like they do. Um, I try to make it fun, um, and it seems like, you know, when they're having fun, they learn more. Um, the D.A.R.E. program isn't you know the way it used to be it, it's it's evolved over the years what do you mean it so uh, how would you say it's evolved over um, the years when i was uh, i went through the dare program as a, as a student a, a long time ago um it was more focused on drugs they've changed the curriculum i believe it was in 2013 um it's more focused on good decision making and and being uh, showing the kids that there's someone there for them. If it's not a, a, a focus on, you know, don't do drugs, just say no. It's not that. It's um, they changed the name of the program. It's the, they, call, they call it keeping it real now. Oh, um, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, it went from just say no to keeping it real, uh, and it's it's very different. Um, there's uh, lessons on peer pressure, lessons on uh, good decision making, um, lessons on being a good citizen. Um, there's only one lesson on drug, on uh, tobacco and uh, alcohol. The rest are all about helping them make good decisions. Oh, really interesting. So one <coughs> of the big things that um, I've always noticed is that, um, now you just uh, mentioned that the focus has sort of shift, but um, for a very long time, marijuana has been seen as like the gateway drug mm -hmm. and um, this and that and the other, but how has the curriculum changed and how has the feedback been ever since uh, marijuana has like been starting to be legalized uh, medically and recreationally in different states? Um, I'm not familiar with the, the curriculum that D.A.R.E. uses because we don't teach it here. They did come up with a marijuana curriculum for uh, high school students, I believe, but we, we don't teach high school in Peters Township. Uh, I don't, I'm not super familiar with that curriculum, I'm sorry. No, no problem. Um, why do you think that um, D.A.R.E. and the, the whole uh, drug education and, um, I'm sorry, what did you say the new program was called? It's called Keeping It Real. Keeping It Real. Um, why do you think that that's focused more on elementary school kids rather than middle school and high school kids? Um, 
Well, they do have the program that goes all the way up through high school. The Keeping It Real program comes into the high school curriculum, but again, we, we don't teach it. But here we focus more on the, the younger kids. Um, they're, they're learning, they're just learning, and hopefully we can be a positive influence on them. I think that's the main focus. Have you seen, so I know that you're um, new to the program mm -hmm. and whatnot, but have you seen uh, the program making a difference in children's lives so far? Um, I see it, it makes a difference where the, the kids become uh, more familiar with the police. Um, they're more familiar with me. They uh, approach me even when I'm not at work and come and talk to me. And I, and I think that's a big benefit to the program to show them that, hey, you know, the police are, are, are good guys and you can go talk to them and it, it's okay. And I think that's a huge benefit of, of the program. And I think that's pretty much the, the, the main benefit that I've seen so far. That's great. So have you, um, how often do you see drugs affecting the lives of adults? Um, it's, it's strange because where I've come from with my career, I, I saw it on a daily basis um, from, uh, you know, a, adults that had kids and adults that didn't have kids. And it was like every day I would see someone. Now, from what I've observed and through all my training and, and my work that I've done all these years, um, I can go out and when I'm out, I can look at someone and say, uh, you know, that person's on something. And it's, um, it's sad, but you know, it's just the, the way our, our societies become with medications. People are on drugs legally, you know, with medications, and, and it, it's sad how, how bad it's become. So uh, with uh, drugs and medication almost becoming normalized, mm -hmm. is, um, do you often find, like, negative feedback in, like, the reliability, I guess you could say, in the program? Like, have you ever had any complaints from parents? Um, no, I haven't had any complaints, but I haven't been doing this program that long, and I, I haven't been able to see my kids that I'm teaching now as they're older, so I don't know how the program is going to affect them. Um, I'm hoping it makes a positive impact on them, and if it helps one kid, I think it's a success. Just curious, has Officer David ever, like, mentioned any of his old students before that he's, like, taught in the program? Um, I've talked to Officer Dave a few times off um, away from the after retirement away from the job and uh, he hasn't specifically named anyone but he I know he always prided himself on you know knowing the kids and and watching them succeed yeah for sure so um, would you say that uh, dare and the keeping it real program would you say that that is um, widely supported by the community I would think it is. Um, I haven't had any negative feedback, and I think the lessons are, are pertinent what, to what's going on in our society. Um, it, it, again, it's not all, you know, just say no, don't do drugs, stay away from that. It's, it's giving the kids the tools and the knowledge on, on how to handle certain situations. How do you think that the community can become more involved? Well, in Peters Township, our community is pretty well involved with, with our youth. Um, just being there for them, parents being involved with their children's lives, and, and it, it happens a lot here at, at a younger age, and I think that's a big big help, a big plus. Do you personally, or maybe not personally, but do you hear a lot about like uh, parent involvement in their students' lives when it comes to this? Um, I, not, not much. Um, I, have a, I hold a graduation like for the fifth grade students, and the parents will come in for that, and a lot of parents will come up and talk to me, but I don't know, you know how involved they are other than what I'm, I'm observing there. Uh, would you say that parents tend to have a more positive effect or a more negative effect when it comes to uh, these types of programs? I think it's a positive, as long as the parents, you know, a parent telling the child, hey, you know, Officer Judd's teaching you good stuff, uh, you should pay attention. I, I think that, that helps as well. That's great. So we are going to take a quick break, but when we get back, we will discuss what improvements can be made to the D.A.R.E. program. Welcome back from the commercial break. 
So how would you say, um, would you say that you have like tried to um, make connections with these children and like try to be involved in their lives? Yes, I think that's one of the main goals of the, of the D.A.R.E. program, um, to show the kids that, hey, the police are approachable, they're good guys, you can come and talk to us. Uh, since I've come to Peters Township, I've only been here about a year and a half, uh, started in the D.A.R.E. program only six months into my career here. Uh, I would work the football games uh, here at the high school and, and off duty in the evening and the kids, I'm walking and the kids are yelling my name everywhere. Kids are coming up trying to give me high fives, people are trying to hug me, Can, and, and I see them all over. I go to all the schools and it, it, it's a good feeling to, to have that. Um, but I think that I, I, I'm making a positive impact on their lives to show them, hey, you know, Officer Emery, Officer Judd's here, he's a good guy, I can talk to him if I have a problem. I, I hope that's what it, it's, it's showing them, that if they ever have a problem, they can come to me. And I tell them that all the time. Come to me, come to any officer, we're here to help them, um, just like their parents are there to help them. Yeah, so diving <laughs> a little bit more into that, mm -hmm. how would you say that the uh, children have had an effect on you? Um, from my previous career, uh, what I've experienced, it's, it's very dark and um, not much community support with what, I, what, I, what I've done in the past. I come here and the community support is, is great. Seeing these kids, it brightens my day. It, it, it's a very good feeling when I have a kid running up to me and wanting to give me a hug because you know, I had them in their class. Mm -hmm. Now switching that up, how would you say that that has had an, a positive effect on the children? Um, I would think it, it, it has a positive effect. It shows them, again, that we're here for them and they're happy to see me all the time. It, I'm going and walking to PV, I got kids yelling in the hall, Officer Judd, Officer Judd, and they're getting in trouble because they're in line, supposed to be quiet, but you know, that's, that's just part of, the, uh, part of the position, I guess, and, and it's, it's a good feeling, it really is. Yeah. So uh, going into a little bit more of your past of being a narcotics detective, mm -hmm. would you say that uh, it has made your transition into uh, teaching these new, uh, I'm sorry, like these new uh, drug resistance programs, would you say that it's helped you? Um, I think it has. It, I saw the, the dark side of it, the, the bad side. Um, I've, I've witnessed the, the adverse effects of drug activity from you know, adults all the way down to, to newborn children. We're going into homes where, you know, the parents are using drugs and they have a newborn in a crib or in a, in a bassinet that's just screaming and crying, malnourished. Um, uh, and, and it all comes down to, to poor decisions, ultimately. And, and that's what the D.A.R.E. program figured out and they've created that curriculum for that. Um, I, I've witnessed the results of poor decisions from, you know, little kids all the way up through adults. and. Um, it's it's sad it is and I'm happy to be where I am now uh, I really enjoyed what I did but you know this is much less stressful mm -hmm. so while you were working in those more um, uh, more active uh, like the more drug active mm -hmm. communities mm -hmm. uh, did they also have programs like dare in their schools um, I worked for the city of Pittsburgh they do have a dare program uh, I don't know the extent of it uh, that what grades they teach or how far they, they go into it. Uh, I know they have a lot of students and I know there were officers from Pittsburgh Police that taught it, but I think there were only three or four for the whole city. Um, so it, they were probably taxed with time on being able to get it done. Did you, um, were you there long enough to see the effectiveness of the program throughout the community? Um, well, I've, I worked for the city of Pittsburgh for 17 years. Uh, so I never really noticed a change in the D.A.R.E. program. Um, I wasn't really aware of what they were teaching even then until I became a D.A.R.E. officer here. Uh, what do you think led to the D.A.R.E. program in places like, um, like the inner cities of Pittsburgh? Why do you think that it may be less effective there than it is in communities like in Peters Township? Um, <laughs> communities there are a lot different than, than here. Um, I don't want to like bad mouth anywhere, but inner city is, is a little different. Uh, they see and do things and they've, it's just a culture and they, they've grown up to seeing these things and it, they're just callous to it. Um, like the shootings, the drug dealing in the corner. Um, it, it takes a strong parent to get their child to stay away from that stuff. And a lot of times they don't have it. Um, 
how do you think that parents can become more involved in their uh, children's lives when it comes to um, drugs and alcohol abuse? Uh, just talking to them. I, I have children, I talk to them, um, I, and I want them to know, like, I'm their parent, I'm not their friend, but I'm there for them. If they have a problem, they know they can come to me. They know there's consequences to their actions, but they know that if they have a problem, that they need to come to me and, I, and talk about it, and I will help them. I'll do everything in my power to help them. And I think that's a big thing that parents need to, to do with their kids, is just talk to them. Just talk to them and know what's going on in their lives. Be aware of what activities they're involved in. That's the main, main problem today. Yeah, for sure. I honestly completely agree. Like, uh, with my parents, it's always been like, um, don't do it, mm -hmm. but if you're stupid enough to do it, like, come to me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, would you say that parents being more involved in their students' lives, or in their children's lives, um, makes the student more willing to go to their parents? I would think so, but again, kids are kids. Their kids are, I was a kid, I did stupid things as a, as a child, and we're, we're all going to make mistakes. It just happens. It's just, they need to be aware that when they make a mistake, they have someone to talk to and they need to go talk to that person. So uh, what can be done to um, help the students who may have already um, fallen into bad habits of drug and alcohol abuse? Well, we need to get them help. and. Uh, People aren't always willing to admit they have a problem and get the help. Uh, that's where their other classmates and their friends come in, and their families. Every, you see your front, your classmates. You know, I'm sure you know someone in the school right now that's probably struggling with some kind of problem. Um, you need to help them, and by doing that, you can go and help and talk to an adult, talk to someone in the school, saying, "Hey, so and so is having a problem. I think they need some help." That's the first step of getting someone some help, and maybe that'll open that student up and say, "All right, I do have a problem." It's just a matter of we got to get them talking about it. That's the first problem, getting them to admit that they have the problem. So if high school students are um, more susceptible to falling into these bad habits, then why is the D.A.R.E. program taught to kids that are in first, second, third grade? Um, honestly, I, I don't know. I, I believe it's time here. Uh, Peters Township School District academics is top notch. and. Taking time away from that to teach the D.A.R.E. program, you know, may hurt adversely. We're, we're, and also the resources. I'm only one person. Um, I can't teach every student um, in the school district there. And we don't have the officers to be able to train more to come around and teach. Like, um, in, a, in a typical school year, I teach about 270 D.A.R.E. classes. Uh, I'm, I'm running between schools, um, I'm also the resource officer at the middle school, so I kind of have that obligation. They don't want to take me away from that, um, but yeah, I think it's a, a matter of time and resources. Um, steering away a little bit, mm -hmm. um, so the changes to the D.A.R.E. program, such as uh, switching from just say no to... Um, keeping it real. Keeping it real. I'm sorry, I'm just no, so okay. used to like D.A.R.E. No, like, I know. Um, would you say that these changes have uh, made the uh, have made the program more effective over time? I think it has. Um, obviously, I haven't witnessed the old program, but I, I I think it's making a connection with the kids and it's giving them the options and the skills and the and the knowledge to be able to handle adverse situations. So, um, just for the time that you have been here. Um, what improvements have you seen yourself that could be made to the program since you've started? Um, I, I really haven't seen much improvement that need there and much that needs improvement at this point. Uh, again, I maybe over a few years into it, I may see something, but I'm still getting you know used to teaching it and and learning my way. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, if I'm not wrong, there is someone that is going to be taking your position pretty soon in terms of the D.A.R.E. program? Yes, um, I got promoted to a corporal position, so I'm not going to be the resource officer anymore. I'm going to go back to patrol, and they're training another guy right now. He's actually at D.A.R.E. training right now to, uh, to take over. And what's his name? Officer Joe Johnston. Joe Johnston. Yeah. Um, what type of training has he been going through? Um, in order to like learn the curriculum of the D.A.R.E. program? Uh, the D.A.R.E. program training is a two-week program. Um, it, it's pretty intense. It's focused on you know, classroom management and teaching uh, 
and then they, they, they get into the curriculum and you get very familiar with the curriculum. You actually have to teach a lesson to your fellow officers and, and get familiar with it before they even pass you to be able to be a DARE officer. Interesting. So um, now that you're going to be, I guess you could say, passing the torch mm -hmm. uh, down the line, um, what type of advice do you have for um, Officer Johnston as he takes on this new role? Um, just to have fun with it. Uh, the more open you are and the more fun you have with the kids, the more receptive they seem to be. Um, and I'm able to interject like personal experiences and that always helps them. That, that you can see them you know, brighten up and pay attention when I start adding stories about what I've experienced throughout my career. Interesting. I'm sorry, is it okay if I just go straight to outro? Yeah. All right. Teaching students about the risks of drug and alcohol abuse is very important, but whether or not DARE is the most effective tool used by, used by schools has still been in question by many people. Schools and local police force are always working to make improvements and to make lasting effects on children's lives. If you or a loved one have been affected by a drug or alcohol abuse, please don't hesitate to call the number below. Thank you for watching this week's episode of The Edge.